Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. This is Module 7, Computer Vision. Part 1, Computer Vision Datasets. First of all, make sure you run the helpful functions just like before and the other modules. So now we're going to focus on computer vision. This will be different than some of the um, other modules that we've worked on before. The data are entirely different. So while I say run the helpful functions above, a lot of those helpful functions were for representing data like z-scores and dummy variables and other things. A lot of that will not be done for computer vision. Some of it will be. Um, but in computer vision, we will usually use classification, uh, though res regression is still an option. Often we will be trying to classify, is it a dog, is it a cat, uh, various things. The input to the neural network is now 3D. Before we input data in, we would send it a single row that had an iris, the, the four measurements of the iris, the different attributes of the car for miles per gallon. But now we are sending in a computer image. We're going to have a height, a width, and a depth. The depth is the RGB color space. Height and width are also very important because the fact that two pixels are close to each other is important because their, their meaning are shared. Whereas two pixels on opposite ends of the, of the screen might not be as uh, important to each other. In previous examples like the miles per gallon and the iris, the fact that two measurements in the iris were next to each other, that didn't matter. You could, or the miles per gallon, you could put the acceleration at the beginning or at the end, it doesn't really matter. But for these neural networks that are capable of scanning and understanding deep, um, understanding the images through their deep neural network, it's, it's very uh, important. Data are not transformed, there's no z-scores or dummy variables, and processing time is, um, is much longer. GPUs become very, very important. Uh, there's a module in this course entirely on high-performance computing, and we'll see how to use GPUs and other um, characteristics or AWS, Amazon Web Services to, um, to make to make these things run much, much faster. We'll now have a variety of different layer types. Before we just had dense layers, but now we're going to have conv uh, convolution layers and max pooling layers, and later on we'll even see dropout layers. Data will no longer arrive as CSV files. TensorFlow provides some good utilities for going directly for, uh, from image to uh, input for a neural network. Fix a small typo. Okay. So it always likes to push me ahead when I when I do that. So we're going to look at a couple of very common image data sets from the very old to the very new, just so you have an idea of the type of data that you're going to be looking at. First, we're going to consider what is probably the hello world of computer vision. This data set has been around for a long, long time. The minced digits data set. This came from Jan LeCurn. And it is basically handwritten digits, zero, 10 of them, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The minced data set, first of all, where it came from is standardized forms. So back when I did exams uh, in, in grade school and high school, you would fill in something like your ID number. And yeah, when I went to school, usually they would have you enter your ID number in there because nobody feared identity theft at all. So you would enter your ID number or something into there, your phone number, and you would fill in these little boxes. Well, that's very cool from a machine learning standpoint. You've just created labeled data. You have handwritten your numbers into here, and you filled in this highly reliably computer readable. So computers can read this part very reliably. 
uh, have been able to do for years. But up here you have, so this is your X, these are the numbers that you filled in, and these are the Y. This is, this is what they really are. And here you can see some of these numbers um, entered. The data have a variety of, of issues, like this one here, you can see there's some sort of a border got with this one. Some of these are even misclassified. The student would enter a four and maybe mark a five. So some, there's some errors here. Boy, this five is barely, barely a five. Uh, but you have a whole variety. You also you have European sevens with the hash going through them and um, non-European sevens. So all of this data together, and you'll also notice too it's grayscale, is presented at Jan LeCurn's website. So here is here are the data that you can download. This is another difference with the data for images. The data for images are often in some sort of proprietary format, and this is definitely the case here. Usually it's binary, it's not CSV files. And there's a variety of decoders that will read the immense data set, but all the different data sets have their own encoding. They'll very rarely give you a directory full of JPEGs. Uh, you, you could, but there'd be a lot of additional processing of bringing all, all of those together. But this is, this explains where the data came from. And this part here is particularly interesting. You'll notice that the minced data set is broken up by, um, into training and test already. So they specify ahead of time what they would like you to use for training and test. Because there's almost a little competition going here. You can see the test error rate over the years. And different researchers, originally Lacan and his group, um, but then other people, are slowly pushing this error rate down, and it has gotten pretty good over the years. And these are all different, these are links to the actual academic papers that, that did this, and they have a variety of different techniques. Linear classifiers, k-nearest neighbors, boosted stumps, nonlinear classifiers, all of these, and then finally neural networks and convolution nets, like we'll see tonight. The idea with academic research here is it's very well established. You use the same training, it's very reproducible. You use the same training, you use the same um, test, you evaluate it. If you get a lower number than the last one on the list, although this data set has pretty much been beat to death, but nonetheless, other, other sets are sort of like this. You get, you get a lower value and then your name and your paper could be next on this list. So this is, this is the MENTS data set. He goes on and describes the file format for decoding this. Uh, it's not too bad to decode. I did have to do that for one machine learning class that I took earlier, earlier in my student career. Okay, so that's the MENTS data set. We'll see a specific example for it uh, during this module. The CIFAR data set is also pretty much fun. It is, there's two variants of it. There's the 10 and the 100. This is the 10. That's how many classes. So airplane, automobile, bird, cat, deer, dog, frog, horse, ship, truck. The 100 one has, has even more. So this is, you can see, these are all various airplanes, automobiles. And this is a really good image set that you can use to, to um, uh, to train your uh, your neural networks on. This is for images, so these are all, 30, I believe these are 32 by 32, kind of the size of old icons. And like a lot of these image data sets, a common complaint is too many animals. If you look, there's 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 60 percent uh, are animals. So if you're trying to classify animals, this could be a good uh, starting point for your for your training. And this uh, this website, they give you all of the information on it. They tell you how to download it and get into file formats as well. If you're using Python like we are, uh, there's already you can download it as a pickle file, which is basically 
Python serialized to, to a file so that you can very easily pull that in. They also have the binary version, and then you can see here they have superclass and subclasses. This is the CIFAR 100, and this is um, uh, the classifications. And the author probably took some grief over the fact that mushrooms um, aren't really fruit, or vegetables, and bears aren't really carnivores, but nonetheless, that's where he put them. All right, so that's the CIFAR uh, 10 and 100. Just to give you some other, uh, other resources on this, Andre Karpathy did a very good um, example of, of using the CIFAR networks. If you scroll down, well, this is a this is his entire website for um, his his uh, class. He has a class entirely on convolution um, neural networks. So, computer vision and convolution networks are definitely uh, big enough that you can take entire entire classes just on them. He has a, on, on his ConvNet.js, he has a number of toy data sets. Just Google search ConvNet.js if you want to find it. His CIFAR example is really cool. The top part looks pretty boring, but scroll down and you'll see that basically in real time using JavaScript, he's classifying these. And the neural network is learning to classify. It's not so smart at first. Uh, that tr that horse it seems to think is a is a truck by the way my human brain cannot even classify some of these but um, it's getting smarter like deer if it's green on top that means it's correct so that's a frog I don't know if I would have known that's a frog um, but thinks that ostrich is an airplane which is actually kind of funny but he shows you basically the um, all the steps that the convnet is, convolution net is going through. This is really, really good for showing the internal workings. Um, even though this is not TensorFlow, this is JavaScript that he essentially wrote from scratch, the, the techniques are all the same. So we will look at this in the next part when we look more at the convolution neural networks. And you can see the training is, is, is really going quite well. Another, and I have some links to his course, so if you're very, very interested in convolution networks and computer vision, it's not a major research area for me, so I don't, I don't go too deep into it, but we cover how to do the convolution nets in this, um, in this module. There's definitely more, more information there. And then ImageNet, that's sort of the, one of the newer ones, although there's, um, it's a, it's a uh, visual recognition challenge. What now we're trying to do is look at not just seeing a frog by itself or a bird by itself, but seeing these in conjunction, person, hammer, flower pot, drill. Um, I've seen more advanced versions of this where they're literally trying to even uh, take a describe, like girl, petting, dog, bird, murdering and eating frog. I don't know, it would probably just say bird eating, eating frog. But these are, this is uh, ImageNet, which is very much getting more towards the state of the art of trying to recognize images and in images, and then even getting the interactions uh, between them. All right, that is everything for this part.